All right, everybody. Welcome to Logarithms. We have a lot to cover, so I'm hoping this video isn't too long. Shouldn't start off by saying that on a video, right? Okay, so logarithmic functions were created to make math a lot easier and to make calculations a lot easier. But logarithms have a lot of properties, which I think is offsetting the students. But if you understand logs, then you will know that you can apply logs to almost anything and it will honestly make any calculation simpler. And that's the reason logs are created. They take these transcendental functions, these exponential functions, like transcendental, like meaning like, like large functions, right? Transcendental, like trig functions, exponential functions. These are all considered transcendental functions. What they do is they take these humongous inputs and they put them into a simpler format. That's what logs do. Uh, take, for instance, earthquakes. When an earthquake hits California or anywhere, they're like, oh, that was a 7.1. Okay, you're like, I guess that's bad. Well, if you really think about it, so earthquakes are measured, I think, uh, what was it, by vibrations and in millimeters, I believe, something like that. So think about it. An earthquake just shook a whole city. And we're saying, oh, that's a seven on the Richter scale. No, you have to understand that that number is definitely, definitely larger than seven. And they use logs to measure earthquakes and they take this 100,000 million number, whatever, and condense it into a smaller format so we can understand it better. Because imagine on the news, they're like, that was a seven million millimeter earthquake. Everybody's gonna be like, what? <laughs> okay. so. That is my spill on logs. They make your life easier, but you have to choose to like them. You must like logarithms. Logarithms are life. And today we just go over certain properties. We go over graphing, solving, all the good stuff for logs. Okay. All right, that was three minutes. I'm timing myself on this one. Okay, so remember one-on-one -on -one functions. Last time we were graphing exponential functions, a to the x. And a to the x, an exponential function, is a one-to-one -one function, meaning it has an inverse function. And guess what that inverse function is? The inverse of the exponential function is the logarithmic function. And what's really cool about these inverses of each other, exponentials are inverses of logs, and we can also say logs are inverses of exponentials. Well, what's really cool is that you can take a log and rewrite it as an exponential function, and you can take an exponential function and rewrite it as a, logarith a logarithmic function because they are inverses of each other. So the definition of a logarithmic function, the base of a logarithmic function is A, where the base has to be greater than zero and not equal to one. That's very similar to an exponential function and is denoted by, so right here, the way we pronounce this is we say y equals log base a of x. y equals log base a of x. And this is true if and only if you can convert it to an exponential function, x equals a to the y. Okay, so this is only true if you can convert from log to exponential and exponential to logarithm. The domain of a log function is all values of x greater than zero. That is just the domain for a log function. You cannot plug in zero. You cannot plug in any negative numbers into a common log of x. All right, a logarithm is a name for a certain exponent. So log base a of x represents the exponent to which a must be raised to obtain x. Once again, just stating how they are inverses of each other. A log function takes an exponential function, a transcendental function, and puts it into a simpler format. Okay, it's really cool, okay? So we want to start converting logs into exponentials on the next example, but let me show you how that works. So let's look at this definition real fast. To go from the log to the exponential, 
we have to notice some things. First off, one thing is given. The base of the log becomes the base of the exponential function. And then the way we convert from log to exponential is we say log base A, or just base A, raised to the outside number of Y. So you take the base of the log and you raise it to the outside, the thing on the, the number on the outside of the equal sign. So you say A raised to the outside number of Y, which gives us this. A raised to the Y. And then you set it equal to the value inside of the log. So we say A raised to the Y equal to, equal to the value inside of the log, which is X. So we would get A to the Y equals X. There you go. And now that's how you convert from log to exponential. Base A raised to the outside number of Y set equal to the inside of the log X. Now, how do you go the other way? All right. Well, now let's go from exponential to log. We say the base of the exponential becomes the base of the logarithm. So the base of the exponential goes down to the base. The exponent goes out side of the equal sign, and x, the inside of the log, well, x outside of the equal sign of exponential goes inside the log function. Now, this one's probably a little more complicated to think of, but I have a nice little phrase I like to say when converting from exponential to log. We can say that the base goes down, the exponent goes out. See, this is down, the exponent goes out, and the value of x goes in. So whenever you are converting from exponential to log, you always feel down and out. Get it? Down and out. <laughs> or, or you can say do, right? I haven't made a one up for logs just because I don't think I need to. But going from exponential to log, I've got a phrase, right? An acronym, down and out. All right, there you go. Now let's keep going. So all we want to do here in these examples is convert from log to exponential. So we say for the first one, the base of three gets raised to the y. So we're going to have three to the y. And then you set it equal to the inside of the log, which is x. That's it. Nothing more to it. Do it again. 4 equals log base 3 of 81. Base 3 raised to the fourth. Set equal to the inside of the log 81. And that's actually a true statement. <clears throat> 3 to the 4th power is 81. Whoa, right? Do it again. C, base 5, raise it to the Y. And set it equal to X. Last one. Base 5. Raise it to the negative one. Set it equal to the inside of the log. One fifth. There you go. That's easy. That is converting from log to exponential. And you see that we get some true statements here. 
3 to the 4th is 81, and 5 to the negative 1 is 1 -fifth. Pretty cool if you ask me. Okay, <clears throat> next one is converting from exponential to logarithm. So let's get started. Remember that the base of the exponential function becomes the base of the log. So we say log base 1.2 of the outside number, so log base 1.2 of the outside number of m is set equal to the exponent of 3. That's it. And of course, how do you check your work? Just convert it back. 1.2 raised to the 3, that's right there. Set equal to m, that's right there. That's how you know you did it right. All right. Do it again. Log base e of the outside number of 9 equal to the exponent of b. That's it. Don't think too hard about these. Sometimes it's that simple. Do it again. Base a log base a of the outside number of 24 equal to the exponent of 4. That's all she wrote, y'all. So those are exercises on how to convert from log to exponential and exponential to logarithm. And the only reason we can do this is because they are inverses of each other. It's super nice, really easy. Okay. Fun stuff, right? Okay. Now let's say we want to evaluate logarithms without using a calculator. Very rewarding. So in order to do so, what we're gonna do is take our log and set it equal to y. And then we will convert it to exponential notation and solve for x or y, whatever variable we want. So that's all we have to do here. So this wants to know, what is log base two of 16? Fair enough, you could type it in a calculator and be done with your day. But we want to show you, I want to show you how logs actually work. So, <clears throat> what we're going to do here is set it equal to y, or set it equal to your favorite variable. Does not matter. We'll change up the variables on the next one. Why not? And once you set it equal to y, we are going to convert from log to exponential. So we say 2 raised to the y and set it equal. To 16. Now we can start guessing powers, which you probably know what power 2 has to be raised to to equal 16, or you can also solve it another way. We learned this for exponential equations. Remember this property? a to the u equals a to the v means u equals v. We can apply that here as well. So even though you probably know the answer already, if you don't, great. Change 16 into a base of 2, which will give us 2 to the 4th. And guess what? Same base. This means that y equals 4. So in reality, what we're saying is that the original problem, log base 2 is 16, 
is for. Okay, let's do it again. So let's set this equal to x this time. Does not matter the variable. And convert. Five to the x equal to one. All right. Oh boy, how do we solve this? Well, you have to think about exponential powers. What can what number can five be raised to be equal one? And this would use the property x to any number, x to any number, x to the zeroth power, any number, that's what I'm trying to say, any number to the zeroth power is always one. Therefore, if you apply this, that property, if you say five to the zeroth, this means you'll get one, which means that x is zero. Or another way to look at it is you can change one into five to the zero. So what we can say here is that five to the X is equal to five to the zero. Same base, guess what? X still equals zero. Insane, right? I'll just leave that there for you. All right, do it again. Let's set this equal to Z, sure. One fourth to the Z gives me one fourth to the Z that equal to 1,024. All right, now we have some work to do. And since we're doing logarithms and exponents, we have to keep our mind fresh on exponential properties. Because in order to solve this, we are looking for a common base. And apparently that common base is going to be four. So the first thing we have to do is say, how can we rewrite one fourth exponentially? And you can rewrite that as four to the negative one. But just remember that Z is outside. So four to the negative one is the same as one fourth. And then what is 1024? Can you write that as a base of four? And I don't even know that, let's see. I know four cubed is 64. I know four to the fourth is 256. And I know four to the fifth is 1024. So 1024 is known as four to the fifth. Which means that by exponential properties, you'll get four to the negative Z equals four to the fifth. Same base, which means you'll get, I'll go up here just to get on room, you'll get negative z equals five, and therefore z equals negative five. Oh boy, good times, right? All right, let's do it again. We'll go back to setting that to Y, and then you'll say six raised to the Y, six raised to the Y equal to the square root of six. Okay. Well, remember that we can rewrite radicals as exponents. So this would use that property the square root of x or the nth root of x is the same as x to the one over n, which means we would get 
six y equals six to the one half. And then same base, y equals one half. There you go. Nothing to it, right? Just some Jedi mind tricks, okay? All right, last one. Let's do it again. Set this equal to x. Choose a different color. And I'll say 3 to the x equal to 1 over 27. Now, again, exponentially, we're going to look for a base of 3, which means you can rewrite 1 over 27 as 1 over 3 to the third. Then use your negative exponent rule, and you'll get 3 to the negative 3. And then therefore, you'll get 3 to the x equal 3 to the negative 3 and same base x will equal negative 3. Good times, y'all. So you see how logarithms and exponentials are working together. We must remember exponential properties, and we convert from log to exponential to help us actually evaluate this log without using a calculator. Now, if you have a calculator, well, all you got to do is type it in and hit enter. But what is the fun in that? <laughs> okay. So. And trust me, you want to know how to work logs by the time you get to calculus. It's a lifesaver, trust me. All right. Properties of the logarithmic function. So just the domain and range. So remember that exponentials and logs are one to one, so they're inverses of each other. So this means that the domain of the log is the range of the exponential function and the range of the log is the domain of the exponential function. Because remember, since they're inverses, domain and range switch. So therefore, just looking at this, the domain of a log is zero to infinity, and the range of a log is negative infinity hey, to infinity. That's missing a parenthesis. Okay, so that's just important to know. The domain of a basic log function, and when I say basic, this means there's only an x in the argument is the domain is greater than zero to infinity x greater than zero okay perfect yeah i guess another way to write that is x greater than zero right okay all right so the next page let's practice on finding the domain of logarithms when you have something other than x inside your log. Okay, so for this one, the domain of this log, all we do is you take whatever is inside your logarithm, and you set it greater than zero. That's it. There's nothing more to it. Of course, you have to solve it. So now you solve it, and you get that the domain of this log has to be greater than negative three. That's it. Nothing crazy. Or negative three to infinity. Okay. Next. Oh boy, look at that. Okay. So, same thing. The domain of this one, you take the inside of the log, and you set it greater than zero. Boom, boom, boom. Guess what we have? Flashbacks to 5.5, 5.4. You have a rational inequality. Oh my goodness, why?
which means we must solve it using a number line. And so the way we find our numbers is remember that you'll get an x intercept from the numerator and you'll get an x value from your denominator. So we'll say numerator. You put one plus x equal to zero and you get x equals negative one. Denominator, we'll just say denom. You get one minus x equal to zero and you get one equals x, which can happen because it's in the denominator. Okay. And then we plot it on a number line. Oops. There's negative infinity, there's infinity, and we'll plot our two numbers, negative one and one, and we'll just pick test numbers and plug it into the rational inequality above. So, let's see. So I get x equals negative two for this first interval. And then x equals zero for that interval, right? And then x equals two for the last interval. Okay, so just take these numbers and plug them into the rational inequality. And if I plug in negative two, Let's see, I'll get y equals negative oops, one plus negative two over one minus negative two, and we get negative one over three, which means that this means we are negative, which means we are below. Okay, and then if I plug in zero, I'll get one plus zero, over one minus zero, which will give me one. This means we are above. And then we plug in two and you'll get uh, one plus two over one minus two and you'll get three over negative one, which means we are below. So remember what this inequality is asking you. It's asking you where are you above the x-axis. And we're only above from negative one to one. So this means piecing it all together, the domain of this log is going to be negative one to one. There you go. And we can't include negative one because it doesn't have an equal to, right? There you go. Good thing we remember how to solve that one, right? Okay. Okay, next one. The domain of log base one half x to the fourth. And you see how the log base has nothing to do with the domain. It's only the function inside the argument. Okay. So what do we do with this? So the domain, as we say, for this function, you take whatever is inside the log, and set it greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Well, we have some thinking to do here, right? Because we know the domain of a log has to be greater than zero. But you also have to think about what is this function doing x to the fourth, right? So 
We could also solve this by a number line if we wanted. There's multiple ways to solve this. I'm just trying to think of which is the easiest way to solve this, right? And one of the ways you could do this is by fourth rooting both sides. So you could say the fourth root of x to the fourth equal to the fourth root of zero. And since you are even rooting and even power, this would leave you with the absolute value of x greater than zero. This is just a rule, right? It is saying the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. Well, this would also be true for the fourth root of x to the fourth. You would also get the absolute value of x. So what this means, since I'm showing you without a number line, let's see if this makes sense, is that the absolute value is a piecewise function. So this means that with the absolute value, you get all positive values for x greater than zero and all negative values for x less than zero. So the way to piece this domain together is saying that, well, x to the fourth, no matter what I plug into it, the outcome is always going to be positive and greater than zero. Even if you plug a negative number in, you're gonna get a number greater than zero. Even if you plug a positive number in, you're gonna get a number greater than zero. So this means that I can use numbers greater than or equal to zero. I can use numbers less than zero. This means I can use numbers to the left of zero. Actually, I don't need the equal to because the logs you can't put zero in. So I can use numbers to the left of zero. I can use numbers to the right of zero. I just can't use zero. So what this means is that the domain is negative infinity to zero union zero to infinity. This is our domain. And that's solving it by just absolute value properties. Now, if I were to show this on a number line, the only x value you would get here is zero. So if you choose a test number to the left, negative one, and you choose a test number to the right and plug them into this inequality, you would get y equals negative one to the fourth, which is one, which means we are above. And you would get y equals one to the fourth, which gives me one, which means we are above. Which means that this is everything we said using the absolute value properties. This inequality wants to know where are you above the x-axis on? And we're above the x-axis from negative infinity to zero, but we can't claim zero because you can't plug zero into the log logarithmic function. And then you're above again from zero to infinity. So there's our domain. Okay. Right, that's a lot to take in. That one's tricky. So I just showed you two ways how to solve this. Okay. <sighs> it's domains. What time? Uh, 34 minutes so far. All right. Perfect. One moment. Okay. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. All right. Now we get into something called the common log function and its graph. And as you can see, it's already graphed below to save time on this video. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. So definition here, if the base of a logarithmic function is the number 10, then we have something called the common logarithm. If the base A of the logarithmic function is not indicated, 
then it is understood to be 10. So just like this says, if you ever see the log function written just like this and notice that no base is shown, then it is understood that this base of the log is 10. And this is true if and only if you can convert to exponential. So what all of this means is that, I'll write it above, you have y equals log base 10 of x, which means that you can now convert from log to exponential, which will get you right there. So once again, if you do not see a base there, then that base is 10, no matter what. Okay. Now graphing the log function. Okay. So like I said, I did it for you already. So these are a little tricky to graph. So I chose the best coordinates and they're the ones you see graphed. These are basically the only coordinates you should choose for graphing a log function. So if you plug in one over 10 into the log function, you're gonna get negative one, which is this point down here. If you plug one into the log function, you're gonna get zero, which is this point here. And if you plug 10 into the log function, you're gonna get one, which is somewhere out here. So this is the graph of the log function. You see that it will never ever touch the y-axis. The log function goes out to the right to infinity, and we'll go down to negative infinity. It will never touch the y-axis because its domain is x greater than or equal to zero. Which means that, looking at this graph, you have a vertical asymptote right here at x equals zero because it will never touch. Okay. So we can put that over here. And of course, its domain is x greater than zero, and its range is all real numbers. Yes, you can plug other numbers into the logarithmic function, but you're gonna get some crazy decimal numbers. That's why I say these are the perfect numbers to pick when graphing logs. And even if you're gonna do transformations, which you will, these are the numbers you want to transform. It's gonna get ugly, but that's why we have calculators to handle these decimal numbers. Okay. And then you find its inverse. So let's walk through that real fast. All right. So the inverse of the logarithmic, and it's the same steps we use for all the other inverses. So step one, we would say y equals log of x. Step two, you interchange them. x equals log of y. Step three, we solve for y. And in order to do that, let me zoom in, we first must rewrite the log. This is the common log, remember? No base is shown. So we have to rewrite this as log base 10 of y. And now in order to find the inverse of this logarithmic function, we must convert from log to exponential. So we're gonna get 10 to the x equal to the inside of the log y. And there you have it. The inverse is 10 to the x. And like all good inverses, since we already have the first function graphed, all you do is take the points and flip them, switch them, swap them, whatever you want to say, reverse them. 
So we already have these points. So now if you look at the inverse function 10 to the x, which is already graphed for you, it's the blue one, we see that you have the common exponential points, negative 1, 1 over 10, 0, 1, and 1, 10. And this graph goes out to the left and then up to infinity. And then other thing, other properties are known. First off, this no longer has a vertical asymptote. The inverse has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So you see how those swap. A vertical asymptote now becomes a horizontal asymptote on the inverse. And then the domain is all real numbers. And the range is y greater than zero. So everything just flipped. That's it. Nothing new other than the functions. That's it, the logarithmic function. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna get into some transformations and these are the parent function coordinates we're gonna use, all right? It's gonna make life easier, it's gonna be messy, there's nothing we can do about it. Okay, so that is the common log. So another big takeaway here, if you do not see a base on the log, the logarithmic function, know that base is 10. All right, and now we get into the natural log function, ln, not in, ln. So when you type it in my math lab, it's ln. All right. So if we are given the natural log function, then no, if no base is shown, it is understood that the base is the number e. So look at this. y equals natural log of x is only true if and only if you can convert the natural log to the exponential function e to the y. And once again, just to show you for the natural log, it's written as y equals natural log base e of x. If no base is shown on the natural log, it is understood to be the number e. Nothing else. It always has to be the number e. And with that being said, if you rewrite it as natural log base e of x, you can convert it to the exponential function e to the y. Okay, and once again, to save some time, these are graphed for us already. We just have to understand the coordinates and how to find the inverse. So, first thing we look at is the coordinates, the parent function coordinates, the easiest, most ugly ones to choose to graph this are one over e, one, and e. So if you type in one over e to the natural log of x, you're gonna get negative one, which is down there. If you type in one, you're gonna get zero. If you type in e, you're gonna get one. And look at your natural log function. Very, very similar to your log function. This graph will head out to infinity, and this graph will head down to negative infinity, never ever touching the y-axis. So once again, some takeaways. The natural log, just like the log function, has a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. Its domain is x greater than zero, and its range is negative infinity to infinity. Now, let's find the inverse of the natural log function. And same steps as usual, one, y equals the natural log of x. Two, interchange, x equals the natural log of y. Three, solve for y. Well, we're gonna rewrite the natural log with its base of e. 
And now all we have to do is convert from log to exponential. So e raised to the x. e to the x equals the inside number of y. And there you have it. The inverse function of the natural log is e to the x. And look, we graphed e to the x last class. That's there already. This graph goes out to the left, up to infinity. And everything switches, right? Here are the parent function coordinates for the natural log. And they flip and become the coordinates for the exponential function. And then we take all of these properties of the natural log and flip them around for the exponential function. So we get that the exponential function has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Its domain is all reals. And its range is y greater than zero. There you go. Nothing to it. Okay. Whew. 47 minutes. Not bad. All right. Okay. So now we're going to graph some. So just hold on. So now we're going to get into graphing with transformations. So we're given log of x minus 1 plus 5. So let's go ahead and find out all the information for this log function first. All right, so this is all under A. I'm gonna just write it as Y equals the log of X minus one plus five. Okay, so one thing we can take away from this is the domain. We see that the inside is x minus 1. So this means that my domain is going to be all x values greater than 1. And then we see that we have a vertical shift of 5. So what we can say now is that since we've taken the original log function, shifted it to the right, and shifted it up 5 units, this means that, uh, actually, no, it's not going to matter because our range, no matter how you shift it, should still be all real numbers. I was thinking of the exponential. Okay, so now we want to graph this. So what we have to do is go back and look at the parent function coordinates for the common log. One tenth. 1, 10. So let's go ahead and write those down here. I'm going to do this. X and log x, 1 tenth, negative 1, 1, 0, 10, 1. And then let's see what magic I can do with this. Now we're on our way. Pace. Oh no. Oh man. Where'd you go? Actually, let's undo that and undo that. No, no, no. We're going to go out here. Work with me. Work with me. There we go. And you're coming over here. All right. Beautiful. All 
Okay. These are the parent function coordinates. Now we're going to transform them. Let me make them a different color. There we go. And then we are going to transform them using the transformations we see above. So first off, you have x minus 1, which is a horizontal shift to the right. So this means you'll add 1 to all your x values. And then you see you have a plus 5, which is a vertical shift up 5 units. So you'll add five to all your parent functions y values. So you'll get one tenth plus one. Let me use my calculator. I know we could do this, but I'll use my calculator and I get 11 tenths, which is 1.1. So you get 11 tenths or 1.1 and then add negative one plus five, you'll get four. And then 1 plus 1, you'll get 2. 0 plus 5, you'll get 5. And then 10 plus 1, you'll get 11 and 6. Ooh, look at that. So there you go. We have just graphed by transformations. Now let's go ahead and plot this on my graph. I know 11 won't fit, but we'll do our best to try. All right, so 1.1, 1 .1, let me see. So 1.1 1 .1 and 4, that's going to be right here. 1.1 1 .1 and 4. Maybe I can make it smaller. 2 and 5. Which is right there. And then 11 and 6. So there's 10 and then 11 would be out there somewhere in six. One, two, three, four, five, six. there. So this is what our graph is going to look like for this log function. It's coming out this way, and then down like that. Okay, so here is f of x, that's what I'll put. Okay, so now, oh, I shouldn't have gone past there. Well, one moment, sorry. This should be going like this. There we go, because we have to be greater than one. So this means we're never going to touch one. So we have a vertical asymptote at one. So x equals one. Okay, so we can put that information here as well. So also, vertical asymptote. x equals 1. Okay, now let's find the inverse and graph everything else. Okay. Again, the fruit. So b is the inverse, it'll be purple. And step one, we have it as y equals log of x minus 1 plus 5. And then step two, interchange x equals log of y minus 1 plus 5. Step three, solve. So first we're going to rewrite this as x equals log base 10 of y minus 1 plus 5. And now we're going to solve for y. So first thing to do is move that 5 over x minus 5 equals log base 10 of y minus 1. And now we will convert from log to exponential. 
So we're going to say 10 raised to all of this. So we get 10 to the x minus 5 set equal to y minus 1. Now move the 1 over, and we're done. Now just claim it as the inverse. And then everything that follows should be easy because we just take everything and we flip it, right? So first off, domain is now all real numbers. Range is going to be my y values greater than 1. And then my vertical asymptote now becomes a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. And now all we do is we take this xy chart and we flip it. So 4 and 1.1, 1 .1, 5, 2, 6, 11. Let's see what we got. I could probably leave that there. Okay, 4 and 1.1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, somewhere around there, right there, 5, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, and 6 and 11. So that's going to be up here somewhere. Okay, so here's what this graph looks like. Oh, it's a good color. I guess we keep it black there. There you go. There is f inverse of x. Crazy, right? And that means you have a horizontal asymptote now at y equals 1. There you go. Boom. Nothing more to it. All right, and maybe if we have time, I'll show that these are actually true using Desmos, but we got to keep going. Like I said, don't want to take too long. All right, now let's do it for the natural log function. Oh boy, okay. So here for the natural log, A, we'll write it as y equals the natural log of 3x minus 1. Okay, domain, you set 3x greater than 0, divide by 3, and x is greater than 0. Range should still be all real numbers. And then when we graph it, we'll find that vertical asymptote. Actually, no, I think we know what it's. Actually, yeah, since it's greater than zero, domain and vertical asymptote should go hand in hand. So this means that we should have a vertical asymptote. X equals zero. Okay, now we got to use the parent function coordinates. Oh my goodness, for the natural log. So I'll do this again. So X natural log x and 1 over e, negative 1, 1, 0, e to the first, and then boom, 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 boom. Good. And then, learning from last time's mistake, 
it'll get pasted right here. Boom. And then move straight over here. Okay, and let's transform. So, first off, the three on the inside is a horizontal compression. So this means that you'll multiply all the x values by one third. And then the negative one is a vertical shift down. So we'll say y minus one. Ooh, and one third times one over e is one over three E, but I need a decimal number. So one over three E, 0 0.12, that's perfect. So 0 0.12, and then if I do negative one minus one, I'll be at negative two, and then one times one third, that's one third, which is 0.3, right? 0.33, zero minus one, minus one. And then E times one third is E over three. So I need that. Point 0.91. And one minus one, we'll get zero. Okay. Let's graph these incredibly tiny numbers. All right. So at point 12, we're at negative two. So that's gonna be somewhere around there. At point three, three, we're at negative one. Not much bigger. And then at point nine, one, we're at zero. So that's basically Right there. Well, let's see how on the money I can get it. Basically right there. So this means you have to move a little bit there. Okay. So using those three points, my graph is gonna look like this. Let's see, we'll come from here. Probably not as curvy, but we get it. So here's f of x. Okay, inverse time. So b. One y equals natural log three x minus one, two, Interchange, natural log, 3y minus 1, 3, solve for y, rewrite it as a base of e. And now solve for y. Move the 1 over. x plus 1 equals the natural log e of 3y. Convert natural log base e to the x plus one. So e to the x plus one set equal to the inside of three y. And then divide by three and e to the x plus one over three equals y. Oh man, crazy, right? Okay, and then I can rewrite this as one third e to the x plus one equals the inverse. All right, hard part's over, easy part, everything flips, right? So, domain is all reals. 
range is y greater than zero and horizontal asymptote will be at y equals zero. Okay, and then this xy chart flips. All right, so I'll just put that over here. Since I wasn't cautious about room this time. Negative two, 0 0.12. Negative one, 0 0.33, and zero, 0 0.91. And let's graph. Okay, negative two and 0.12, so probably around here. Negative one and 0.33, not much higher. Zero and 0.91, right there. And here's what we look like. And there is F inverse of X. Pretty symmetric across that line Y equals X. By my graphing skills, of course. <coughs> all right, y'all. There it is. There, that's all of it. That's it. There it is to it. Blah. That's all that there is to it. So if you're doing the transformations, which you will in your homework, take these parent function coordinates and just transform them. Okay. Oh. Last two pages. All right. An hour and seven minutes. Not bad, not bad, okay? All right. So solve logarithmic equations. So logarithms cannot be negative. <coughs> so when solving, Discard any extraneous values by checking your answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve these logarithmic equations. And first thing we should do is check domain before anything. You would have 4x minus 7 greater than 0, 4x greater than 7, Therefore, any answer we find has to be greater than seven fourths. Okay, so that's our domain, but now let's go ahead and solve. Too big. Let's go ahead and solve. So when we solve, well, the only way to solve this logarithm is to convert from log to exponential. So we say three, raised to the second, so we'll get three to the second, set equal to the inside of four x minus seven. Look how beautiful that was, too easy. And now solve for x. Nine equals four x minus seven, add the seven, 16 equals four x, divide by four, and you get four equals which does that fit in there? And I believe four is definitely greater than seven fourths. Seven fourths is 1.75, so yes, this checks out. There you go, that's it. So to solve these logs, you must convert from log to exponential, okay? And then you can plug it in to show that it's true. But we need, I don't want this video to be longer than it should. So let's keep going. Two. All right, so this one's a little different. Um, we have to go by log properties, and by log properties, we know that the base has to be greater than zero. The base always has to be greater than zero. So in order to solve this, all we have to do is convert from log to exponential. I mean, sure, the domain for this, x greater than zero. I'll put that there. And now let's solve. You'll say x raised to the second, set equal to 64. Square root both sides. x equals plus or minus 8. 
Now, which number do we throw out? Remember, look at our domain. X has to be greater than zero, so we mix the negative. Therefore, X is just equal to positive eight. Not bad. What else? One, two. Oh, is that it for that page? I guess so. Cool. Computer's being slow. It's like, hurry up. I know this video is too long. All right, number 10. Now we want to solve these exponential equations. So now in order to solve these, we have to convert from log, I mean from exponential to logarithm. And the way you choose the logs is based on the base. Based on the base, you choose the logs. Yes. So since this has a base of E, we're gonna use the natural log because remember, if I have natural log base E of X equal to Y, then I can convert this to E to the Y equals X and the other way as well, right? They go back and forth. So that means that we now convert from exponential to logarithm. And since this has a base of E, we use the natural log. So this means that the base E goes down. Remember, down and out. So this means the base E goes down. So I'll get the natural log base E of the outside number, right? The base goes down, the outside number comes in, and the exponent goes out. Down, in, out. Okay, and now we just rewrite this as the natural log of five equal to two x. We don't need that e there because it's understood that no matter what, that is the base of the natural log. And then you divide by two and you get the natural log of five over two equal to x. All right, I think this is how it wants your answers, but if it wants you to use a calculator, then one moment. Let's see what we can do here. I'll use the TI-84, sure. All right, and now if I'm typing this in, natural log of five over two, I'm gonna type it in like this. Natural log of five, close parentheses, divide two. That's it. And I'll do it to three decimal places since it's a log. And you'll get that X is approximately 0 0.805. That's in case it wants the decimal answer. All right, going back to the notes. Moving on, let's do it again. So convert from exponential to logarithm. The base is E, so we choose the natural log again. So you'll get natural log base E of the outside number of eight set equal to the inside number of two X plus five. Down, in, out. And now I just rewrite it as the natural log of eight equal to two X plus five. And let's just solve for X. So move that five over, natural log eight minus five equals two X, and then divide by two and we are done. And no, if you're thinking it, don't think it. This eight and that five do not subtract because that eight belongs to that natural log. Yeah. Now let's say you wanted to type that in your calculator. Well, classic, classic input. I would start with parentheses and say 
natural log eight, close that parentheses, minus five, close that parentheses, divide by two. And you get negative 1.460. There you go. All right. Last one for all the money. All right. So we now have 8 times 10 to the 2 minus x equals 5. So the exponential function, if you notice, is 10 to the 2 minus x which means we no longer need the natural log, we need the common log. So this is gonna use y equals log base a of x, which we know can convert to a to the y equals x. That's what we're gonna do here. But in order to do that here, the first thing we need to divide is that a. We can't convert until this exponential function is by itself. So we're gonna divide by eight. Just say divide eight, divide eight, and you get 10 to the two minus x equals five eighths. Okay, and now we convert from exponential to logarithm, common log. So the base goes down, we get Log base 10, a uh, different color, of the outside number of 5 eighths set equal to the exponent of 2 minus x. Look at that, nothing to it. And then rewrite it as log of 5 eighths equal to 2 minus x, subtract that 2 over, log of 5 eighths minus 2 equals negative x, and then divide everything by negative 1 to make the x positive, which is just going to change the signs on these, which means I'll get 2 minus log of 5 divided by 8 equal to x. Done and done. If it wants decimals, let's check it out. Two minus log of five eighths. Five divide eight, close parentheses, look at that, that's all we need, and enter, enter, and we get 2.204. Voila, people. And those are logarithms, but those are just the properties. I think we just really touched on domain, range, graphing, asymptotes. Next lesson is about more properties of logarithms. These are life changing. Choose to accept logarithms in your life. Convert, convert, convert to logs, okay? But there you go. Hopefully it wasn't too long. You can uh, watch me on uh, one times, two times speed on YouTube just to speed this up because I know it's a lot of information. But there you go. These are logarithms, guys. Take it all in. All right. See you at the next one.